Hey there everyone, welcome to FJX 2000 Productions and another episode of Let's FJ. In today's episode, I wanted to make a video talking about the different years of FJ cruisers and what changes were made to the FJ between 2006 when they were first released as the 2007 model year and 2014 when they were discontinued in the North American market. I'm sure further changes have been made to models outside the US and especially in countries where the FJ cruiser is still available today. But this video will really only cover the North American models. I hope this video is informative to current FJ owners, but I hope it is particularly helpful if you're a future FJ owner and want to know which model of FJ cruiser is best for you. You'll see in this video that certain changes were made over the years, and you may want to seek out a specific year of FJ or newer, as those FJs may have the things you are looking for. Before we begin, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who has been watching and enjoying my recent FJ Cruiser informational videos. It has been awesome to see the channel grow so quickly, and it is because of you all watching, liking, and subscribing that I was able to reach my channel goal of 5,000 subscribers. How crazy is that? Thank you all so much. If you enjoyed today's video and aren't already subscribed, be sure to do so, of course. But today, my new goal is to reach 1,000 likes for this video. If we can do that, it will make it my most liked video on the channel. Also, I recently made a new playlist specifically for my Let's FJ informational videos that dive into different interesting topics about FJ cruisers and puts them in one easy place to find. So be sure to check that out and watch any episodes you haven't already seen. Also, consider sharing any of my videos with folks that you think may enjoy them or could learn from them, especially if they are a current or future FJ owner. But thanks for supporting what I do, and I will do my best to make more videos for you all. Anyways, let's get started. In March of 2006, the first 2007 model year FJ Cruisers started being delivered to new owners who had pre-ordered them or just happened to snatch them up from their local dealers. These 2007 FJ Cruisers were available in the following colors, Voodoo Blue, Sun Fusion, Black Cherry Pearl, Titanium Metallic, and Black Diamond Pearl. All of these colored FJs, of course, sported the traditional white roof, reminiscent of the classic FJ40 Land Cruiser, to which the FJ Cruiser owes much of its design cues. They also had silver trim pieces used for the front and rear bumpers, grille, door handles, and mirrors, which matched the silver trim that was also used inside the FJ on the dashboard. The 2007 FJ Cruisers could be purchased not only as a base model, but also with the Convenience Package, Upgrade Package 1, or Upgrade Package 2. There is also the TRD Special Edition offered for 2007, with both the roof and body being painted in the Black Diamond Pearl color, but check out my specific Special Edition video if you want to learn more about that or any of the other Special Editions mentioned in this video. Toyota also offered a variety of additional parts that could be purchased or added to the FJ to meet the buyer's wants. Here are some screenshots of those available accessories, and note that the accessories changed slightly over the years. The FJ was available as a two-wheel drive model with the five-speed automatic transmission or a 4x4 with either the six-speed manual or five-speed automatic transmission. One thing to note about the early four-wheel drive FJs produced up until approximately November of 2006 is that they had the issue where the rear differential would override the A-Track system if you wanted to operate both simultaneously. However, if you bought a 2007 TRD Special Edition, or any FJ produced after November 2006, this issue was resolved by Toyota, and those 2007s going forward could operate both systems at the same time, with the A-Track working on the front axle and the rear diff locker working on the rear axle. Another thing to note is that 2007 to 2009 FJ Cruisers had the earlier Toyota 8-inch rear differential, and though it is more specific to the 2007 FJ Cruisers, the rear differential ring and pinion gears were prone to breaking teeth off due to either their size being insufficient on these newer, heavier vehicles versus the smaller Toyota pickups of yesteryear, or simply Toyota experienced a bad batch of metal gears for a while that had weakened metal composition. I even had two teeth bust off of my pinion gear while driving down the highway in my 2007 TRD Special Edition, but for most folks, these broken gears occurred while off-roading on the trails, so do keep in mind that this issue exists. Another issue that existed that wasn't truly changed until a redesign in 2010 was the notorious fender bulge or fender cracks that occur in the engine bay, right here and here as a matter of fact. Though these were usually found on 2007 FJs, other FJs like my current 2008 FJ can get them. And luckily for most folks, they don't get too out of hand or cause any issues. 
Though I have seen worst case scenarios where the tears are huge or the whole fender felt loose, which can't be good for the FJ's structural integrity, especially in the event of a car accident. Over the years, some people have done their own modifications to fix this, or have even said that Toyota offered a part that could be purchased and installed to help reinforce this area of the fender, but details were often murky at best about that. It ultimately is something I would be sure to look for when checking out these early FJ models, and make sure that the damage doesn't get too out of hand. Moving on to 2008, we can now start looking at some of the changes that started being made to the FJ Cruiser. For 2008, the available colors for the FJ included Voodoo Blue, Sun Fusion, Titanium Metallic, and Black Diamond Pearl, with the addition of the Brick and Sandstorm colors for this year. 2008 saw the TRD Special Edition replaced with the Trail Teams Special Edition, where Iceberg was the featured color, along with a black trim rather than the traditional silver trim. One convenient change for this year is the addition of the side sun visors by the roof handholds, as the front sun visors didn't quite cover enough of the front door windows to offer protection from the blinding sun. TPMS, or the Tire Pressure Monitoring System, wasn't added until 2008 as well, so now you could know if one of your tires was punctured and began to leak, which is a helpful safety feature. Another big safety change was the standardization of first and second row side curtain airbags as well as front seat side airbags, which for 2007 were just an available option. The 2008 FJs were now also equipped with a vehicle immobilizer, which means the Toyota key transmits a code that makes it so the engine will not start without it, regardless of the key being used normally in the ignition. Speaking of keys, starting in 2008, the keys no longer had a separate key and remote fob with the lock, unlock, and panic buttons. Rather, the key and fob were incorporated into a single unit. Also, the key cylinder now had a light, making it easier to see where to put the key in a dark vehicle. For 2008, Toyota offered the Convenience Package, Upgrade Package 1, and Upgrade Package 2 once again, but also began offering the new All-Terrain Package that came with features such as the new 16-inch 5-spoke aluminum alloy wheels with 265-75 R16 BF Goodridge Rugged Trail tires. The suspension on this package came with trail-tuned Bilstein shocks, and they of course came with the rear locker and A-Track systems, among other convenience or upgrade package features. Also, it was reported that starting in 2008, TRD superchargers could now be installed by dealerships, giving the FJ a sizable power boost right from the dealer showroom. In 2009, the available FJ colors were Voodoo Blue, Sun Fusion, Brick, and Sandstorm, with Silver Fresco Metallic replacing Titanium Metallic, and a standard black paint replacing the Black Diamond Pearl. The Iceberg color was also now available for standard FJ Cruisers, versus it only being reserved for the Special Edition like in 2008. The same Convenience Package, Upgrade Package 1 and 2, and All-Terrain Packages were offered for this year, but Toyota introduced a two-wheel drive specific package called the TRD Package, which I again talk about more in my Special Editions video. Once again, no huge visual changes were made, but there were a number of nice features changed or added. For one, the FJ now had front map lights, which for owners of 2007 and 2008 FJs, you know how dark the cabin can be with only the center and cargo dome lights, making these front map lights a welcome addition. For 2009, a VSC off button was added, which made it easy to now disable the VSC and or track systems of the FJ with the press of a button and an RSCA off switch was also added since 2009 FJs now had a rollover sensor and the RSCA off switch disables the rollover side curtain airbags that can go off when off-roading if too much off-camber tilt is detected. But for more information about FJ Cruiser buttons and switches, check out my last video all about that very topic. A link will be in the description below. Another addition to the 2009 FJ was a non-lit vanity mirror on the driver's side sun visor. Previous to this, only the passenger side was equipped with one, though neither side ever got a light with the mirror. Speaking of mirrors, in 2009, for the convenience package, the rear view mirror was upgraded to not only have an auto-dimming electrochromic feature so you aren't blinded by the headlights of someone driving behind you, but Toyota finally added a backup camera to the FJ, and the screen for this camera was incorporated into the rear view mirror, and would only be visible when the FJ was in reverse. The backup camera itself was mounted in the center of the spare tire, so a center wheel cap wasn't used with this wheel, and rather, Toyota had a special wheel cover that had a cutout for the camera to view through. 
And finally, for 2009, the daytime running lights became a standalone option that could be added. Moving on to the 2010 model year, Toyota made some big changes to the FJ Cruiser, not only to the color options available, but also to the mechanical and structural parts of the FJ. These changes were so extensive that it is for this reason that the FJ is usually split between the 2007 to 2009 and 2010 plus model years for many parts and accessories, especially for the engine and suspension. As for colors, 2010 had the Brick, Sun Fusion, Iceberg, and Silver Fresco Metallic once again, with the addition of Army Green. Also for 2010, Sandstorm was the color used for the Trail Team Special Edition, and that color was exclusive to the Trail Teams for this model year. The available packages for 2010 included the Convenience Package, Upgrade Package Number 1, Upgrade Package Number 2, the All-Terrain Package, TRD Package, which no longer appeared to be two-wheel drive specific, and the Trail Team Special Edition. In 2010, the FJ Cruiser received a new engine, going from the previous 4-liter DOHC 24-valve V6 with single VVTi making 239 horsepower and 278 foot-pounds of torque, to another 4-liter DOHC V6 but with dual VVTi and new roller rocker arms that helped the engine produce 258 horsepower, a 19 horsepower increase, but only 270 foot-pounds of torque, a decrease of 8 foot-pounds, with an overall 1 mile per hour gain in average fuel economy. Another thing that changed with the new engine that will affect regular maintenance is the location of the oil filter going from being accessible through the top of the engine bay to being located beneath the FJ, which to some folks is a bit inconvenient, especially if you have skid plates that require removal each time the filter must be replaced. The frame on 2010 FJ Cruisers also experienced some slight changes to accommodate the new engine and other slightly changed components. So some parts, such as skid plates, are not backwards compatible for earlier and later year FJs. The steering rack and other steering system components were upgraded for 2010, with the most noticeable difference being that the FJ now requires less turns of the steering wheel to go from full left to full right steering wheel lock, and the newer FJs also had a slightly smaller turn radius, from 41.8 feet to 40.7 feet. The suspension components were also slightly changed, specifically for the front suspension as I mentioned in my lift and suspension explanation video series, so watch those for more details about that. But the rear axle received a key upgrade from the previous Toyota 8-inch rear differential to the new 8.2-inch diff, which, while it may not sound like a substantial change, allows for the components to be beefed up in order to help prevent the breaking of differential gears like in earlier years, as previously mentioned. Another change for 2010 came in the form of the windshield washer fluid reservoir being slightly redesigned and relocated. While for folks who keep their FJ stock, especially if you keep the OEM front bumper on, this will have no effect for you. But if you replace the front bumper, most aftermarket bumper designs will expose the new windshield washer fluid reservoir, and it is recommended that you get an aftermarket reservoir installed, as to not damage the original one. And finally, the fenders were redesigned so the notorious fender bulge or fender cracking wouldn't occur, though this change may have occurred in late 2009 models. Moving on to the next model year, 2011 FJ Cruisers came in the colors Black, Brick, Silver Fresco Metallic, Iceberg, Army Green, and now Cavalry Blue, as well as Quicksand replacing Sandstorm. Army Green was also used as the color for the 2011 Trail Teams Special Edition. The available packages for 2011 included the Convenience Package, Upgrade Package, Off-Road Package, TRD Package, and Upgrade Package 3, aka the Not-So-Special Edition, as I talk about in my Special Edition video, and the actual Trail Team Special Edition. One nice upgrade to the 2011 FJs was the available JBL audio treatment option to the FJs audio system. This not only upgraded the head unit to a new Toyota JBL unit, but the speakers were also upgraded to JBL ones, improving the sound quality from the factory, including a JBL subwoofer. Along with the new head unit, the FJ also now had an auxiliary audio port and USB plug, where only an audio port was in the past, with the USB even supporting iPod connectivity. The head unit also had Bluetooth calling and music streaming capabilities, with added controls for Bluetooth calling added to the right side of the steering wheel. 
Other changes to the 2011 model year include the locking rear differential now being standard on manual transmission models, the front passenger seat being able to fold further forward, new folding headrests on the outboard rear seats to help improve rearward visibility and improved heater performance. Also, the floor mats were redesigned, so now they aren't as deep as they once were and their retention system was changed a bit, with the front floor mats now having little turn and lock mechanisms instead of simple hooks, and the rear floor mats having little snap straps that keep them from sliding forward versus the older ones that easily slid around having no retention system. In 2012, the FJ was available in the colors black, cavalry blue, Army Green, Quicksand, Silver Fresco Metallic, and Iceberg. But the Trail Team Special Edition color for 2012 is the unique Radiant Red, a color that was never made available for standard FJs with the white roof for any model year. The available packages for 2012 included the Convenience Package, Upgrade Package, Off-Road Package, TRD Package, and the Trail Team Special Edition. The only notable changes in 2012 included a new taillight design that while using incandescent bulbs is made to look more like a modern LED taillight and Toyota adding a TPMS reset button. This button makes it so the driver can reset the TPMS pressure to whatever amount they want versus having it locked in by the factory with the Toyota dealerships being the only ones who only might be able to reset it. This is a feature I wish I had for my 2008 FJ since my TPMS is stuck at 46 PSI and Toyota has never been able to change it for me. Moving on to the 2013 model year, the FJ was available in the colors black, cavalry blue, army green, quicksand, and iceberg, but now with the addition of the magma color to the lineup, and the trail team special edition came in the new cement gray color. The available packages for 2013 included the convenience package, upgrade package, off-road package, and the trail team special edition. A neat off-roading feature added to automatic FJs with the off-road or trail teams package in 2013 was Toyota's crawl control, a system that allows the driver the ability to only worry about steering, as the FJ itself controls the gas and brakes. It has five different speed settings and works both uphill and downhill, but also can work to get the FJ out of tricky situations, like being stuck in the sand. Another slight change was the addition of the daytime running lights and power outside mirrors with marker lights to the list of standard features, meaning even a base model FJ for 2013 would have those two things installed. Along with the daytime running lights, Toyota outfitted the FJ with a new turn signal switch that has the ability to control whether or not the daytime running lights are on, something past FJ cruisers had no control over unless you did a wiring hack. And for 2013, the backup camera screen in the rearview mirror was increased in size and guidelines were added to not only show what's behind you, but also how close it is. There was also an optional rearview mirror with Homelink also incorporated into it for controlling your home's garage doors. And one last thing that Toyota added in 2013 to the engine bay was the manifold air injection system that involves the secondary air injection pump, otherwise known as a smog pump, which was only added so the FJ could meet new emissions standards. Finally, we reach 2014, where the FJ came in the colors black, army green, iceberg, magma, quicksand, and now cement gray, as it was added to the standard FJ color lineup. In 2014, the Trail Team Special Edition was upgraded to the Trail Team's Ultimate Edition, and it came in a new color called Heritage Blue. Like other special editions, it had black trim, used for the door handles, mirrors, and bumpers. But the Ultimate Edition featured a white grille bezel to set itself apart as a truly unique model that further resembled the FJ40 to which the FJ Cruiser was modeled after. The available packages for 2014 included the convenience package, upgrade package, off-road package, and the Trail Team's Ultimate Edition. No major changes were made for 2014, as it was the final year of the FJ in North America. And that concludes the list of changes to the FJ over the years, but which one is best? Or should I say, which one is best for you? Well that really depends on you and what you are wanting from your FJ. Some folks may be sold on the simpler FJs with less electronics, and the older style engine, which, while well, it made less horsepower than the newer one, produced more torque and had a more accessible oil filter, making maintenance simpler. 
so for them, 2007 to 2009 FJs would be superior. Meanwhile, other folks may not be able to live without a better sound system and a vehicle with Bluetooth capabilities, so a 2011 Plus model with the JBL sound system would be the only ones they would even consider owning. Either way, as you go through the list of changes by model year, you may find some features you absolutely want, or others you would rather avoid, and that will narrow down your list to which FJ years you would like to own. In my personal opinion, if you want one of the earlier model FJs, I would certainly look at 2009s, as the addition of the backup camera, VSC off switch, front map lights, and the lack of the early 2007 model quirks is enough to make that model much nicer to own. But if you're more interested in the 2010 plus models, I would get a 2013 or 2014, as they can come equipped with crawl control, which seems like a neat feature to have, and the TPMS reset button seems like such a nice feature after staring at my 2008's TPMS light on needlessly all the time. Either way, whether you're just curious about the changes to FJ Cruisers over the years, or you are looking at getting an FJ yourself, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. I also hope I was able to earn your like today so I can reach my 1000 like goal, but be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out more of my videos, as well as share them with your fellow FJ Cruiser enthusiasts. I'm so happy I can help you all and hope to produce more of these informational FJ Cruiser videos in the future, especially as the next few years will be pretty busy for me once I begin dental school. But thanks again for watching, and I will catch you all next time.